production of fish in rice fields is almost as primitive as the practice of rice culture itself. Rice farming with fish culture is a type of duo culture farming system in which rice is the sole enterprise and fishes are taken to initiate additional for extra income. Rice cum fish culture is practiced in many rice growing belts of the world including China, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Korea, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and India. In this video we will give complete information on integrated rice and fish farming. Hi friends. Welcome to the Discover Agriculture YouTube channel. If you're not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe now. Benefits of Integrated Farming or Rice Cum Fish Culture System 1. Increases Soil Fertility and Health 2. Increasing the economic output per square meter of land 3. Cost cutting in the manufacturing process 4. Reduces the amount of farm input required 5. Diverse sources of income 6. Financial assistance to the family 7. Efficient use of household labor 8. Reduction in the amount of food that animals need to eat. 9. Reduce the usage of chemical fertilizer as much as possible. 10. Provides farmers with a well-balanced, nutritious diet. 11. Biogas is used to solve energy concerns. 12. Prevents forest deterioration. 13. Increase the number of jobs created. 14. There is no pollution in the environment. 15. Resource recycling. 16. Enhances the farmer's position and livelihood. Practices or technology in rice cum fish farming. Site selection. The site selection for rice cum fish farming is a low-lying area where water flows easily and is available at any time in need. Pond construction. For paddy cum brackish water aquaculture, the paddy plots should be well renovated. Water retention as well as keeping the fish and shrimp during the aquaculture process necessitate the construction of an earthen dike around the paddy plot. The dike height must be maintained between 50 and 100 centimeters, depending on the topography of the plot and the tidal amplitude at the location. For paddy cum brackish water aquaculture, the paddy plots should be renovated effectively. Water retention and keeping the fish and shrimp throughout the aquaculture process necessitate the construction of an earthen dike around the paddy plot. The dike height should be maintained between 50 and 100 centimeters, depending on the topography of the plot and the tidal amplitude at the area. Flooding and weeding of paddy. After transplanting, the paddy fields were flooded. The water level was kept at 30 to 50 centimeters deep until the rice matured, with care taken to keep it at a minimum of 5 centimeters to facilitate adequate filtration. Weed management methods were implemented using a manual method that involved uprooting weeds on both sides of cultivated rice plots twice or thrice a week. Chemical weed control methods were eliminated or avoided to guarantee that materials or agents capable of polluting ponds or causing fish death were avoided to the greatest extent possible. Fertilization of rice fields. The plots used for rice cum fish culture are primarily based on organic fertilization with a variety of animal excretors such as poultry droppings, pig excretor, cow dung, and plant waste such as rice husks, a waste product of local beer, ashes from household brunt, and remains of burnt straws after the harvest is over, as well as compost fertilizers such as decomposed straws, weeds, and rice stalks, among other things. The rice crop was primarily fertilized with cow dung at a rate of 10 kg per 50 square meters bi-weekly. This was accomplished by equally spreading fertilizer throughout the fields from various points along the dikes. Source of fish seed. The progressive fish farmers normally produce the adequate size of fish seeds by rearing in small size ponds for a period of about one to two months and sell them to the farmers who grow them directly in paddy fields and farms. Stocking of fish seeds. Prior to the release of fish seed to paddy fields, paddy is transplanted from rice seed beds to major paddy fields in April, and then paddy is left for two weeks to strengthen paddy roots before the release of fish seed at 2,500 numbers per hectare area. The paddy rearing period is 5 to 7 months, while the fish raising period is 3 to 6 months. Stocking of fish fingerlings. The fish fingerlings initially of mean weights up to 20 grams to 35 grams respectively were stocked at 200 fish per 50 square meters paddy respectively after flooding. Water quality monitoring. The water quality parameter was monitored on a monthly basis. At the refuge trench, turbidity was measured using a CG disc. A pH meter with a temperature probe was used to determine the pH. A multi-range conductivity meter was used to measure the water's conductivity. A dissolved oxygen meter was used to determine the amount of dissolved oxygen. Feeding of stocked fingerlings. Feeding of stocked fingerlings in the paddies began immediately after stocking at designated feeding locations. Once a day, the fish were fed. The fingerlings had to be given the required proximate composition and quantity of feed ingredients at the appropriate time. Growth rate. The growth rate of the fish in the pond was monitored by randomly arching them with a hand net. The fish were weighed and measured on time, and then returned to the trenchers. Feeding rates were changed as a result. 
Before each subsampling, the fish were lured in with food. The mean growth rates for the fish species were computed using Wayne and Davis approach. Harvesting. Harvesting fish is done with a simple bamboo basket known as cane or bamboo. In the same season, fish cultured in rice fields for 3 to 4 months yielded 200 to 300 kilograms per hectare, whereas fish grown for 5 to 6 months yielded 400 to 500 kilograms per hectare. For harvesting, initially, the water is drained through an outlet pipe, allowing fishes and water to accumulate in the paddy fields mid-channel, where the fishes are captured using tussing puda, handpicking, and other methods, and then stocking in large plastic buckets in live condition. Following the completion of the fish harvest, paddy harvesting began. Paddy harvesting is usually done in the last few weeks of September and October. From the same plot of land, paddy production ranges from 3,500 to 4,500 kgs per hectare. Marketing. Because of high market demand, fish collected from paddy fields are sold live or fresh in the local market, with live fish selling for 150 rupees to 200 per kilogram and fresh fish selling for 100 rupees to 120 per kilogram. The market price changes during the lean season. Marginal fish farmers sell their catch at a fish marketer directly from the paddy field. The fish produced in these paddy fields enters the capital markets during the peak season. During the paddy and fish rearing period, no chemical insecticides, pesticide, or fertilizer are applied to the entire paddy field. Conclusion. Rice fish culture is an innovative farming system in which rice is the primary crop and fish fingerlings are used as a secondary source of income. Farmers' poverty is reduced as a result of rice fish farming, which improves yield, creates jobs, and increases nutritional consumption, resulting in food security. Farmers who are youthful, have a larger farm size, and stronger infrastructure is able to make higher money, according to the farm-specific characteristics used to get income. Hope you like this video. Share this video with all your friends and don't forget to subscribe Discover Agriculture channel. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.